me, but the first thing we're going to deal with is the past and why the past is in the way of your future. I really think the first thing we need to understand about the past, because I really believe the reason that the past is in the way of people achieving their dreams, is because they don't, they don't understand what the past is, and they don't understand what the purpose of the past is. The first thing you need to understand about the past is this. The definition of the past is the past is a term used to indicate the totality of events which occurred before a given point in time. Which means for you to be where you are right now at 2.35 p.m., there had to have been a past. You couldn't be present without past. The other thing about past that you need to know is that past, the definition of the word past is totally dependent upon the existence of a present and a future. Which means, if I have a past, obviously I have a present. And if I have a past, I have to have a future. And I think so many people get caught up in the, fact, in the past, not the past, but the past, that they forget about the existence of the future. And they spend so much time looking at the past, and not looking at it, not just looking at it, looking at it the wrong way, that they only duplicate the past in the future. That's in short. So you're reliving events that happened, that should not happen again, because it's past. Another definition of past is that which no longer exists. It doesn't exist anymore to anybody else except the people that choose to live there. That's why some people still don't like races of people because of the past. And the crazy part is, some of the people that don't like other races were never mistreated by the races. Being honest, I'm an African American, I have never been mistreated by a white person. But, I know people who've had a past that existed and they were mistreated by white people. So now I live my future based on somebody else's past. Because I don't understand the purpose of it. Past. So, we've established that the, the word past, the idea of the past, is totally dependent upon the present and the future. That if there's a past, there's a present. And if there's a present, there's a future. And the thing that's going to determine what the future is, is not what happened in the past. That's what a lot of people don't understand. It's the present. It's the choice you make today that will determine tomorrow. Most people think yesterday determines tomorrow. But yesterday will only term, determine tomorrow if you live today and yesterday. Not trying to be complicated, but a lot of people live today based on yesterday, and then tomorrow ends up just like today, which is yesterday. Sounds confusing, but most people wake up and their life is Groundhog Day. What happened yesterday will happen today and happen again. And their life is a cycle of unfortunate events. But Again, it's because they don't know the purpose. The purpose of the past. Um, I learned through speaking that pictures help people understand better than just words. So to better understand the purpose of the past, uh, I think first we have to ask a question. And the question that most people ask about the past, and when they question it, why did this happen? Why was I mistreated? Why was I abused? Why? You know, we never question the good stuff. We never say, why did I graduate high school? Because it was a good event. Good memories. No questions. We never question that great Christmas we had. You know the Christmas. Everybody had one Christmas <laughs> day remember. Mine, Christmas. I, was, I, I was 10. My birthday is two weeks before Christmas. So I had just turned 10. The best Christmas ever. Ever. That was when Super Nintendo came out. I got the Super Nintendo. I got the Super Scope. I got Killer Instinct. I had all these games. The best Christmas ever. I got a bike. You know we don't get a whole bunch of big stuff. But I got a whole bunch of big stuff. I got some ugly clothes and a football with the, with the kickstand that you put it in. That's how great that I remember. And I never sat back and asked myself, why did that Christmas happen? Yeah, we just, it was good, it's great. But with the bad stuff from the past, that's when we ask questions. Why did this happen to me? Why am I going through this? And you know, normally we ask that question based on how it makes us feel. 
or based on what we lost. That's like the whole circumference of our questions about the past. What we lose and how it makes us feel. But we never question the purpose as far as what was supposed to happen to me or change about me because of this event. Rarely do we do that. But I guarantee you if you start asking that question and you look at the person you are, the consequence of what happened, you won't regret the past so much. Because really, the key to getting over the past is making peace with it. But you can't, a lot of the times, I watch the show called The First 48, and a lot of the times on The First 48, the whole part of the big thing behind catching a person who killed someone is so that the family can have peace and the sense of knowing who did it and why it happened. Even the police officers, when they questioned the witness, one of the things they always try to get to was motive. I want to know why. If we just understood why it happened, I could really take it. I could make peace with it if I understood why. Well, I have a better chance of making peace with it if I understood why. When my mother passed away, how was that way? I wanted to know why. I already knew what. What is easy. But why is hard. But this is why. You want to know why? Because you're Jew. That's why. You're Jew. You're important. Period. That's the reason. I was doing some research when I was getting ready for this. And I started researching how diamonds are formed. One of the things I learned is the more it takes to make the jewelry, the harder it comes out and the more valuable it is. So this is what I found out about diamonds. Because you have to understand that the value of a thing is determined as far as jewelry by what it went through. By what it took to make it. Because what it took to make it determined the quality of the product. How much? Honestly. This woman in here, I mean, I don't know, how much do you pay for a cubic zirconia versus what you would pay for a diamond? <laughs> I don't know. I, nobody knows because nobody wants cubic zirconia. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you what cubic zirconia is. Cubic zirconia is the person that tries to tell you how to do something that they never experienced. <laughs> mm. Amen. Really? Because there's nothing to support them. And the thing is, if they get put under the pressure of the experience that they're trying to get you out of, they will break. Mm. Wow. They can't, they can't survive where diamonds survive. Presently, the only thing that can cut a diamond is another diamond. But the only reason that a diamond is the way it is, is because of what it went through. The reason that you're strong the way you're strong... It's because of what happened. All the stuff that you regret and all the stuff that you hate is the reason that you made it through this. And a lot of people don't understand that, so they regret the past. So, and this is the crazy thing. It made them what they are, right? So they're strong, but they're so busy being mad at the past that they don't see what they're surviving today. Mm -hmm. Because there are a whole bunch of people that will go crazy if they were to go through what you went through. Mm -hmm. Don't believe me? When the stock market crashed and people started losing their money, there were people who, when they lost all their money, there was a man who killed his whole family and then killed himself because he lost some money. But me? I'd have been homeless. I ain't killing nobody because I ain't got no money. I would just get some more money. But because he wasn't tried at what I was tried at, he couldn't survive. Losing money. I can survive losing money because of what I went through to become who I am. So if I lose money today, it's just money. I'll get some more. Hopefully it comes sooner than later, but I'll get it. And that's so important. Diamonds. We're talking about diamonds. Check this out. This is the formation of natural diamonds. And this is the crazy thing. No new natural diamonds have been formed in billions of years. Like, it's not, it's no new diamonds. Whatever diamonds are present are present because it happened a long time ago. People always say diamonds are made out of coal. Diamonds aren't made out of coal. I found that out. That's just something somebody says and then everybody took it and ran with it because it was a great story. <laughs> Please do your research. That was the first thing I saw. I went to um, one of the websites. I think it's uh, a gemologist. I think that's what it's called. Gemologist people that study gems and rocks and everything. And the first thing he said is, contrary to popular belief, diamonds are not made out of coal. I was like, okay, well, 
If I was going to use that in the story, we're not going to use that anymore. So diamonds are made out of coal. This is how diamonds are made. It says the formation of natural diamonds requires very high temperatures and pressure. These conditions occur in limited zones of Earth's mantle about 90 miles below the Earth's surface. Mm -hmm. So these are the things we're checking out. That when you went through what you went through because of where it had to happen, no, nobody can come rescue you. Because anybody that can't try to come get you out wouldn't make it through what you went through. That just couldn't come get you. You had to go through it. Diamonds are formed in a place where people just don't have access. It took me a while to figure that out. But some stuff I have to go through by myself. Period. And the only people that can really help me when I go through are people that are being formed as well. It works that way. Check this out. The temperature that diamonds are formed at is at least 2,000 degrees. 2,000 degrees. That's what it takes to make a diamond. That's your past. Your past is 2,000 degrees. If you were to look at all the stuff you went through, that's what it's like. Mm. It's like high pressure, high temperature. It was just hard. There were no breaks. It's just pressure and pressure and pressure and heat and heat and heat. And this is what happens. The pressure and the heat build up and all of a sudden a volcanic eruption happens. And the diamonds will literally push to the surface. And it happened so fast that the diamonds didn't have time to disintegrate. That's how diamonds are formed. If you want to understand the purpose of your path and the reason why it was as hard as what it was, it was because of what you were going to become. Mm. Period. That's it. That's it. And we never see the process of how diamonds are formed. But we always see the outcome. You know what we say? We say, ooh, that's nice. Ooh, that's pretty. But you know what? Ooh, it's expensive. Mm. The reason diamonds are expensive is because of what it took to make them and what they are. Understand, I'm ahead of myself and I'm going to say this again at the end, but the Greek word for diamonds is a diamonds and it means unbreakable. The reason diamonds cost what they cost is because of what they can survive. Not because of how they look. Most people don't know that. Now, yeah, I may pay a whole bunch of money for some diamonds because they're pretty, but the essence of, of the value of the diamond was, was birthed out of what it could survive. And that's important. Because people will pay money for a house that is staying. Mm -hmm. Make sense? So, I'm going to leave this with you as we wrap up dealing with the past. From the backstabbing co worker to the meddling sister in law, you are in charge of how you react to the people and the events in your life. You can either give negativity power over your life, or you can choose happiness instead. <coughs> Take control and choose to focus on what's important in your life. Those who cannot live fully often become destroyers of life. The reality is, in order for you to do that thing that has been so difficult to you to do, you have to make peace with the bank. It's not negotiable. You have to make peace with it. Once you make peace with it, there are certain things you'll gain from it because you will view it from a perspective that's not contaminated by your negative emotions. Because sometimes when you look, you get upset. But wait till the day when you look back at what happened and you don't get mad anymore. Then, the questions are different. When my mother first passed away, I would look back and I would say, why did that happen to me? That's not fair. It hurt. I miss her. Now I look back and I say, when that happened to me, this is what changed. For me, what changed was 